Welcome to Marriage Day Podcast. I'm Jimmy Evans. This is my wife, Karen. This podcast exists to help every couple thrive in marriage. Today, we have a really special uh, podcast for you because Karen's going to be sharing her testimony. This is something that she shared during one of our EXO conferences, and it's about insecurity. It's about how the Lord healed her of insecurity. And Karen, we're going to go to this uh, uh, testimony here in just a minute where you were sharing. But before that, we have a couple of questions. Yeah. Uh, What advice do you have to help this former pastor and wife couple heal after his infidelity? Uh, former pastor and wife, um, you have to get help. You have to go outside of yourself. Go go to a pastor, a Christian counselor, someone that you trust. The um, he has to be honest. He has to take ownership of what he's done, and it's a long road. It's not a quick fix. There has to be now the decisions to the decisions to stay together and work it out is huge. However, the husband here is the burdens on him. The wife has been cheated on, and he did the cheating. So now he's got to prove that he's sincere, that he's going to be faithful to her and work at the relationship. Mm -hmm. You need help. Mm -hmm. Uh, And now we have our mediators here at XO. Uh, They do telephone. They do Zoom. They also do in person. So if you can't find someone there locally, go on XOMarriage.com, and you can find out there about our Mediator Institute. But you need to get help. You, You need to find someone that can help you. And and to keep you accountable, to stay with you through the process, because it's very critical. I think, Karen, you have one there. You do. My husband spends all of his free time playing video games online and with his friends. What advice would you give about approaching this with him? I think he needs the wooden spoon. (laughs) Wooden wooden, (laughs) wooden hammer. Yeah, it's like, hello. Um, Yeah, this is not good. Um, I think that... The best thing probably is to sit down and try to communicate it and just say that, you know, she's feeling like he puts things before her, which we all know is not good. And, and you know, as you and I say, that a number one need that a woman has is security. And so putting this video game so, in you know, over her is, you know, producing a lot of insecurity. And then insecurity produces a lot of other things that he doesn't really want. So, you know, I would just say, you know, be all honest about your how you're feeling. And if he doesn't agree, then say, okay, then let's go get help. Yeah, the number one law of marriage is the law of priority. For this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother. Marriage has to be first. Mm-hmm. And so she is crying out here because, well, this is what happened. We got married of golf. Mm-hmm. I golfed all the time. You neglected you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you greatly resented it, just like she does here. And you told me about it, and I told you basically to take a hike. We almost divorced. I mean, it almost destroyed our marriage. This this can destroy a marriage. Talk to him, tell him this is, and tell him this is very, very important. And just like you said, if he doesn't, well, and, and men don't like to be told because they think you're being a mother or you're nagging. So if that's true, if that's the case, then that's why I say get in, get the help outside right. and let somebody else be her voice of reason. That's right. Yeah. And. Um, what she cannot say to him, somebody else might be able to. But this is dangerous. This, this this continues on, and it's not good for the kids. If you have children involved in this, it's not good for them to see a, you know, out to lunch dad. That's all he cares about is his friends and video games and and whatever. And video games have you know, and they're fine if you can keep it in its in its place. It's fine. If you can't, it it can destroy a marriage relationship. We're talking. We're going to go now to Karen sharing about how the Lord helped her to overcome insecurity. We hope this blesses you. I've never met a person, honestly, that was as insecure as Karen uh, when we met. And you can see how beautiful she is. She's always been beautiful. And so, but Karen thought she was fat and ugly and God couldn't love her. She, that's how she thought about herself. In every area, she was just insecure. But when we got married, Karen was completely insecure, full of self-hate to the point of being suicidal. And today, this is a lioness of God. I watched over the last 40 years how God changed this woman into being a a secure and confident woman. In fact, I think she's a little bit too healed. because. So, (laughs) look what's she Sister Evans here. Thank you, honey. That was awesome, what you just did. I really was born shy. I think all of us are born a certain way, and so... 
Um, from the beginning of my life, I remember just being shy. I can remember my parents were very frustrated people because they were both very strong, uh, dominant people. They, were, they had a lot of self-confidence. They, they were go-getters. They were hard workers. They, you know, they were very uh, involved in their community. And so we were always you know, put in a situation where we're around a lot of um, other people. And so it just increased my uh, insecurities just to be around all that because I didn't know how to deal with it. I was so insecure and shy. And so it frustrated my parents though, and they were not Christians. And so they would try to uh, enforce with words what they wanted us to be. And so I grew up believing, um, I I just really could never measure up to the expectations of what my parents wanted me to be. And today I want to say though, my parents and I have a fabulous relationship. They're fabulous Christians and they're, we are so healed in our relationship, but we all have a story, and we've all been parents. I've got my issues as a parent, and, and so they've had theirs from their parents. And so I don't say any of this to say anything except wonderful things about them today, but our parenting, parenting does affect our kids, and so um, in a good and a bad way, but it doesn't mean that God can't step in and take, take all that has happened in our life and make something new. And that's the whole point of what we're saying today. When we, we turn to God in our circumstances, He does heal us. And so that's what began in my life, is we, we went to church, we were not Christians, and so I, I heard about God, and so I always had an understanding there is a God. And so I literally grew up um, most of the nights going to sleep, crying my eyes out, hating myself. My brother was not a nice, nice to us. And so he called me stupid, fat, and ugly my entire life when I was growing up. And so that, that got in me and it stayed in me and I couldn't get it out. And that's what I believed. And there was just something in me that just said, there's really something wrong with you. I knew God was good. I knew God created the world and he must be so fabulous, but something must have happened on the way from my birth to where I was at that point that made me something that wasn't good. And so um, I remember just, you know, going through that kind of a life and, and just, uh, I, when I say hate, y'all, I mean really hate. Um, the, I think that's the reason I so love the, the body of Christ and what the scriptures do for us is because there's such an opposite. I know what hate feels like. I know what it's like to live in that. And I don't want ever to go back to that. And to experience the love we experience now is so, is so much of the message that we want to get out. Um, and so I grew up, Jimmy and I started dating, and he was the first person that saw good in me. I mean, he, he really did. He just, he loved me for who I was. I didn't understand why he thought I was beautiful. I never did. To this day, he knows. I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. And so, and I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> and so, um, but he's, he has been such an uh, inspiration to me of constantly saying good things about me, but it didn't help. And I knew that I had to get this, this thing fixed in me some other way. And so I just began to, you know, seek God on my own, just talking to God and just begging him to change me. And Jimmy and I were having horrible fights. And this is when we were first married. And I remember just crying out to God and saying, God, you know, I can't live like this anymore. It's too painful. It hurts too much. And I um, opened, it was like, a, I just felt impressed to open my Bible. And at that point, I didn't know the Bible very well. And I opened it up and it, it fell open literally into Psalm 6. And it was David saying, God, please don't be mad at me. Please don't take your anger out on me. I just need you. And, I, and it, he's talked about soaking his couch with tears and how much he just wanted the love of God to, to rescue him. And I remember I read that. And the second I saw that, I, I spent most of my nights going to sleep uh, crying because, you know, we would have these horrible fights and nothing was ever resolved. And so I, I read that and I was just like, oh my gosh, God, you see, you understand. And it was just like for the, I can't tell you what it did. It was like something touched me because this is alive. The word of God is alive and it touched my spirit. And it's like something came alive in me and it said, you will be okay. And it was, and it, I just remember telling the Lord, I'm gonna study you. I'm gonna know who you are because I don't know really. I didn't know Jesus. In fact, the gospels kind of scared me because I'd read them and it's like, I was thinking, Jesus seems kind of mad at all of us because he was always like getting on to the disciples and saying, you should do this and this and this. And if you haven't loved enough, then if you can't even love those enemies, then you're nobody. I thought, Jesus, I don't know. Well, let's try the God thing first. And so I started getting into the, the word and I read Psalms and it was so um, endearing to me because I understood David and how insecure he could be, but yet so in love with God. And so I stuck in the Psalms and then I told the Lord, I'm gonna read the whole Bible all the way through. 
And so Jimmy and I were having horrible fights, and um, I was still very insecure. And so I started reading the Bible from, from Genesis all the way through. And as I started reading it, I noticed changes. And the, but there's one thing I couldn't get uh, satisfaction in. I couldn't believe that God could like me or love me. It was like something in me just, it, I don't even, I can't explain it what, what it was, but I couldn't believe that he could really love me. But I was committed and I was determined I was gonna know what that word of God said because I was embarrassed not to know. And so I started reading it. And so I began to read it. Jimmy started seeing a change in me. And so one of the biggest changes came because I really stayed in um, trying to be a good person and, and learning how to have behavior that was pleasing to God. And the more I read, the more I wanted to change. And I remember Jimmy and I had another big fight and he was like yelling at me and saying, you know, you disobedient little rebellious woman. And I, I wanted to think, are you kidding me? I know a lot more rebellious than me. And but I remember for the very first time, just okay. kind of standing up and thinking, thinking, hey, wait a second, I've been reading 1 Peter 3, and I think I'm being pretty nice. And, I, and, he, and it was like, that was when I kind of said, uh-uh, I'm not doing this anymore. And I just really sweetly said, walked out of the room, and that's when we had that big fight. But what I realized is God has started changing my heart. And um, as I began to just you know, trust that the Lord has changed me and His Word had changed me, it was just like, um, it became the thing that really you know, healed our marriage. And so, and so that's what Jimmy says, like even in the seminars, he says, you know, the word of God came and he healed them. Literally from reading the word of God, and this is the most important thing that you, women, please listen to me. If you think just coming to church, listening to Joyce Myers, which I live, I love all that teaching. I, I grew up on it. If that's all that you, you, can, you can just go on in life and, not, and have that, I'm telling you, there is the most the Word of God is the most powerful thing you can put in your life. I can't explain it. I don't understand it. I just know it's the truth because I am a living testimony that every single day I still read this Word and it still jumps out of the page at me and it ministers to some area of my life like no, Jimmy can't even do this for me. And it's, it's, it's like God is it's so powerful. And so if you're not reading the Word of God, I just, I'm just telling you, you need the truth in you because we're living in a world that doesn't know truth. And, and you have to know this for yourself because it's how you're going to survive in the days ahead. It's how you're going to hold your head up high when Jesus Christ comes back and you're not going to sh shrink back and you're not going to be fearful that he doesn't love you. You're not going to be fearful that you haven't done all the things you need to do because you're going to know what the word says and you're going to trust that. And that's one of the things that, you know, I told the Lord, I said, I really do want to know the love of God. I want to know that you love me. I don't want to question that because I knew Jesus had died for me. And I thought, how rude of me to question that God would love me when Jesus died. And so I started going back into the word and finding scriptures for myself that I could hold on to. And one of the greatest scriptures I found was in Ephesians 3. And I love this scripture and y'all should really read it. And it's like uh, 317 or 16, yeah, 16, 19. Yeah. And so I started praying that for my life, that, uh, that I would understand and have the fullness of God inside of me because I knew I didn't want me inside of me because I didn't like me, but I loved, I was loving God and I was loving his word and I wanted that to be in me. I wanted that to be what was changing my life. I, want, I didn't want to just change my behavior. I wanted God to change my heart. And so, because it, it was frustrating, because I would be, I would go to, um, you know, group things like with women, and I would talk, and I'd think I was going to be this great Christian, and I'd walk away thinking, man, I wish I hadn't said that, and I'd beat myself up one more time, and, and so I just want to go back to saying, though, that the Ephesians 3 is such a life uh, beauty of the love of God and how we are rooted in the love of Jesus Christ. We're already there, guys. We are in the love of Jesus Christ, and we're supposed to be experiencing that, and it's, it's, it, he all goes on and he tells us, and then you'll have the fullness of God. And also the thing that the Lord really spoke to my heart about is there's, there's, a, there's a beauty in love, but there's a, also a power in trusting him. And we have to be able to trust God in every area of our life. And no matter what's going on, it's, we all have pain. We all have suffering. We all have issues that we go through daily, whether it's people who hurt our feelings, our husbands, our wives, our parents. But trusting God and trusting in his love is the most secure place you can be in. And I know that for myself now, because I do believe and I do know that God loves me, is the most secure feeling in the world that no matter what happens around us, no matter how people treat us, no matter if I've had a good day or a bad day, I can, I can depend on the love of, of God that no matter what I've done, he's gonna keep on loving me and I'm secure in that love because 
Um, I wasn't raised with patience and kindness. Um, my parents were impatient and they were unkind. And I grew up being that way. I, I, I would get impatient with Jimmy. I'd get impatient with my kids. And I remember it was the, it was the patience and the kindness as I was growing in God that literally changed my mind about myself and God. And that's what the Word of God says. In Titus 3, it says, it's the patience and kindness of God that leads us into repentance. And that's the other part of, you know, knowing the Word that's such a special thing is when you know His character, it's like nothing else matters. It's, it's the most freeing thing in the world. And I'm still in the process. I still get insecure. This last week, oh my gosh, I was a mess thinking about coming up here. I was so insecure. And, and it was just like, okay, this is, the, this is where I really need you, Lord. And he has, he's been faithful because I can I honestly tell you that the things I'm saying are true. You know, as we're learning about changing our mind, this is what the Lord said to, to say to all of y'all. I will never, he, he will never change his mind about you. Never. He loves you just the way you are and he's never gonna change. He's never gonna change. It's solid, it's, it's forever. His, his love for you, everything about how he feels about you, he's never gonna change his mind. And that is the most loving, kind thing I can end up saying to you guys. And I love you so much. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Hey, this is Brent Evans with Exo Marriage, and I want to thank you for listening to the Marriage Today podcast. We believe your marriage has a 100% chance of success if you do it God's way. If you enjoyed today's teaching and want to keep learning, hey, subscribe to the Marriage Today podcast and take some time to leave us a review. Your reviews help us spread the word and can encourage someone else in need. For more great marriage content, check out exomarriage.com where you can see all of our marriage building resources, articles, and live events.